I have not produced anything for quite some time. As a matter of fact, I don't think I have produced a video for about six or seven weeks. A lot of things going on in my life and uh, a lot of things happening with family, with friends, with work. It's just been kind of a whirlwind. But I'm trying to get back into my schedule and I started with this ephemera keeper. And this I made out of a file folder. And I want to share with you what I'm doing. But I want to first tell you where this came about. I am in the sister tag with Kylie Koo and Sharon over at Texture Junkies. And it's my turn to challenge. And I've been remiss in doing so. So I challenged them with a file folder. This ephemera keeper is my file folder uh, submission to that challenge. And I'll give you the quick intro of sister tag is what we are calling it. And then we'll get busy making this uh, ephemera keeper out of a file folder. See you in a minute. So now you know the tag a sister drill. Be sure to hashtag tag a sister if you decide to do something with your file folders. I've used five. First thing I did was cut them down to seven inches by nine inches. I cut the tabs off because I'm going for an ephemera holder and I didn't really want the tabs. I think I said tags, but I meant tabs. I didn't really want the tabs in this. So I am cutting it down just to create five seven inch by nine inch bio folders to work with. Now that I have that done, I'm trying to config configure exactly how I'm going to put that together. Now I'm mar this is probably overkill. You probably don't have to do that, but I was trying to figure in my mind what I was going to do. So I'm writing um, what I'm going to do with it. So I'm going valley peak and I'm writing where I'm going to put the glue and which piece is going to be glued to the end piece or to the book cover. So I, I don't know that you have to do this, but that helped organize my mind. So valley, peak, valley, peak, valley. And that gives you two valleys on each end that will be appropriate to connect to your cover pieces. Now I'm just numbering them. I, I paint over it anyway. So I, you know, I don't know why I did all that, but here we go. I pulled out my larger gel press and I'm using yellow ochre. Um, I, I love this color. It's one of my favorite paint colors. And of course, just about every brand does a yellow ochre or a yellow oxide, which I think is similar, not the same, but similar. And there is some residue from a previous print job on this plate of a blue color, probably a cold gray blue or a gray blue. And I'm fine with that. We'll just see what it pulls up. And my file folders are not as big as my gel press. So I'm just trying to save some of that paint on a piece of paper that I'll use as my roll off sheet and it'll wind up in my collage bin. But there we go for the first pull And there. I did get some of the residue off of that um, press, but that's, I'm fine with that. 
So I want full coverage because I don't want any of the manila showing. And the second color that I've chosen to lay down is a parchment. And I have picked a stencil that I am going to use throughout each and every one of these file folders. So let's pick up that parchment with the yellow ochre base on the file folder. And there you have it. But there is still some vanilla showing. I'll cover it a little bit with my brayer, but I am also going to pull in a Distress Oxide Spray in Vintage Photo and just muddy around the outside edge, I guess is, is a good term to use. I want to make it look a little vintage, a little uh, grungy, and I want some of that Distress Oxide in there. So we'll, we'll get that applied as well. Now the inside of this, or the, this is going to be an accordion journal. The inside of it is going to have acetate that is going to create pockets to hold my ephemera. At the top of those acetate pockets, I want to secure those a little bit more. So I want washi tape to put atop the acetate. I do not have any in stock that I think is appropriate. So I think you can see what I'm doing here. I have adhered some masking tape, just plain old hardware masking tape to a deli sheet. And the deli sheet is just kind of one of those, you know, wax paper, um, deli sheet, parchment paper, anything like that, that is the tape is going to be able to pull off of. And I laid down a coat of yellow ochre paint and I am covering my washi tape with that base layer of paint. Set that aside, let it dry a little bit, and then I want a darker color, so I've chosen Burnt Sienna. And I am going to utilize this stencil, the same stencil that I utilized on the file folders, on the washi tape in the darker color. So there we go, coats one and two. Now to add just a bit more interest, I have pulled out some black paint and a script stamp that I purchased from PM Artist Studio. I believe it was designed by Froil um, Davis. Is that, is that correct? But in any event, I love the stamp and I am utilizing it to just randomly stamp across this masking tape. So there we go. We'll hit it, you know, everywhere we can. We'll keep the stamp kind of inked up. And then I'm going to pull out a couple of other stamps with some uh, archival uh, black ink. And you can kind of see there how this washi tape is starting to take shape. Stencil with some circles. And I'm not, I'm just putting it down where there might be an empty spot, right? Now we'll get that second sheet done and I'm gonna do the exact same thing. I'm gonna do the stamp, the stencil, and I'm, we're going to finally pull out a third stamp and just continue to decorate this up. There's a stencil. And you may have washi tape in stock that's perfect for, for what you do, and you don't have to go through the step. But I didn't want to leave it out because I actually had created the washi tape that I'm going to utilize. I thought some of you may want to do that. 
However, if you're using a uh, digital kit or a print and paper or a set that you have the washi tape that matches, you're good to go. Now that I have all of my file folders printed, I have my washi tape ready, I just want to confirm that I know what I'm doing here when I go to glue these together, so I glue them together appropriately. And the one thing that I want to make sure that I do so that this book opens well is glue my valleys on each end. So I have a, a valley, a peak, a valley, a peak, a valley. So five file folders, and that's the way I've configured them. Now I want to get my cover ready. So I'm going to cut my cover slightly larger than I cut the seven inch by nine inch file folders. So I can go seven and a quarter inch, seven and a half inch in width, nine and a half to nine and a quarter width or height. Um, you know, depending on, on what you want to do, how, how much space or how much gap you want there between the inside guts, if you will, and the outside cover. And I am just using a K-cup coffee box. And I have my two covers cut and a, not a spine, I don't need a spine for this. So now I want to pull in some color for rice paper that I am going to use to cover my cover. So parchment with the stencil. And of course, there's going to be quite a bit of yellow ochre on my plate, so I'm picking that up as well. And I'm just going to continue to add color to this rice paper until I come up with two sheets that I actually like. And I think I coated four or five pieces of the rice paper, um, you know, just continued to print until I had a configuration combination that was pleasing to my eye for, for the cover. So just print away with the colors that you have, mix up your stencils, mix up the combination or the sequence of the colors, the distress oxide sprays, and just have fun. And this is an ephemera keeper. It is something that you, know, you will have to store all of the small things that you create throughout watching, hopefully, my videos. As um, I get into um, the end of my career and into the next phase of my life, I plan on doing about three videos a week. Don't hold me to this, but these are my thoughts now. I want to do a day of journal making videos. I want to do a day of ephemera and scrap busting and those types of things. Some art journaling on my journaling days, art journaling and journal making, uh, ephemera essentially on, on one day and a day of collage. So that, that is kind of my plan, three videos a week of kind of refreshing everything, um, showing my face more in the videos, which you saw at the beginning here, and going to get better with my video editing. Um, I do have another camera on order so I can provide different angles and, and different things as we move forward. So I'm trying to make it better and get better and become more involved. So I hope you'll you'll st stick with me. So I think I'm just about ready. You know, I'm finishing up this rice paper, and then we'll get it adhered to. Those, that front and back cover that I've cut.
and you noticed probably I used the paint, yellow ochre, parchment, and the Distress Oxide Spray. Here comes a little bit more of that Distress Oxide Spray. I pulled in a, some blue. And there I just ruined a sheet. <laughs> you know, keep that in mind when you're going over, over a piece of uh, um, rice paper with your brayer that is not adhered down to the plate by the paint. It will suck itself right up into, into that brim. So now we have, I think, the choices for my front and back cover. Let me grab that um, pay cup box that I've cut to the appropriate size. Let's dry this up a bit, make sure it's good and dry before I start laying the paste to it, because the last thing I want to do is, is rip it again I'm utilizing Yes Paste. I have my K-Cut box that I've cut for the cover. Just going to fold down my edges because the rice paper is thin. So I, I'm not trimming it, I'm not angling the sides. I'm just folding it over. And I think that will give me a good strong corner um, as well as hide the corrugation or the fact that this is corrugation. And I want to make sure that I have enough on each edge that when I glue the smaller file folder on, I'm not exposing cardboard. I hope that. Now I have pulled out my vintage sewing machine. The sewing machine was owned by my husband's grandmother who used it in the, oh gosh, probably the 30s, 40s, 50s maybe. Um, my husband was born in the, in the 50s and I know she used it for him and, and his sister sewing, sewing things. So. Who knows how long this thing's been around? It is a heavy, heavy, heavy piece of equipment. So I am taping the washi tape on top of the acetate. I have cut the acetate into pockets. So I have cut it in a dimension about six and three quarters inch wide and however high I want the pocket. And the pockets I'm doing in different dimensions on each page. And I am adhering the washi tape to the top and then just sewing around the edge in that U fashion. So I have the two sides and the bottom of the pocket sewn. So that is all I am doing with the sewing machine. Now you can see the two pockets and I will continue throughout all five of these file folders sewing pockets onto each with the washi tape at the top to secure that um, pocket entrance and to make that pocket entrance visible. So this is how it's going to go together. We're going to start with a valley. We're going to go with a peak here, another valley. Of course, we have five, so we're going valley, peak, valley, peak, valley. That will end with a valley at the very end to glue to the back cover. So there's your back cover. There you go. So that's how that book is going to go together. But I want to do some further decorating on this as well. And I want to get these glued together first so they can dry when we add some additional decoration to the front and back cover. 
I'm putting the glitter glue over the stitches to make sure that the stitches stay in place. Then I'm coming back with Yes Paste to get that on every little nook and cranny of the back of these file folders to make sure that my file folders have been put together are adhered from edge to edge. I don't want any places where they're going to peel up. And I will get all five of those positioned and glued together. And as it starts, as you start gluing it together, it kind of starts coming together in your mind exactly what you're creating. So I know when this accordion is sandwiched up with the two covers, when I open it, I'm going to have pockets on the front and pockets on the back. Let's open that up. I have a deli sheet laid out. I'm going to put a deli sheet over the top and run my hands over it and really get this securely into place. Now I've made this pretty good size. I've gone with a seven inch by nine inch, but I can imagine this would be very useful and, and kind of cute if you had done this in a three inch by five inch or a five by seven or, you know, a smaller configuration. There's how my little resin pieces of ephemera are going to fit down in there. And I, I chose to use the S-tape because it's stronger and I have a tendency to make kind of bulky, bulky things. So now to continue decorating the cover, I have pulled out my fountain pen and I just want to scribble all over the front and back cover. Kurt is helping me. He has a tendency to want to be in anything that is um, not appropriate for a white cat, but that's fine. He, he manages to stay clean. I don't know how, um, but I'm just scribbling all over the front and all over the back. I don't know if you can see his little nose peeking in there. There, he's, there he comes. He is about ready to move into his new home. He is my daughter's cat, and he has been living in my workshop, studio, office. You know, it's used for so many different things. And his mother just purchased, my daughter just purchased a home, and she is going to be moving out here in the next couple of weeks. Now I have picked up my calligraphy brush and I just want to do some additional mark making that's a little more bold on the front and back of that cover. There is the piece of ephemera that I am going to utilize on the front. I want to put a name on the book, so I have rolled out some exam um, table paper 
and I'm writing ephemera. I'm using the exam table paper because it goes completely transparent when you adhere it with some glue and water mixture. I don't like the way my handwriting looks, so I'm writing it a number of times to make sure that I come up with at least some choices when I get ready to cut this out and adhere it to the front cover. All yeah, right, I think we have enough. We, we ought to be able to pick something from there. I think I've settled on this one. The last one I, last one I did. That is where I've settled on putting it. Now grab my glue and water mixture. And let's get that in here. See how that goes transparent? I'll let that dry. Going around the outside edges with some ink. I'm using black and vintage photo. I think this is black suit. Hickory smoke, I'm not sure. Now I have ephemera written on the front and it is on the exam table paper. And that exam table paper, because I had the distress oxides activated, the distress oxide a little bit when I went to glue it down. So I want to create some continuity between my front cover and my back. So I'm going to put some additional exam table paper on the back and let that uh, bleed a little bit on the back as well. And I think that that looks fine. I'm going to just cover both with a coat of glue all over the glue and water mixture. We'll just coat it all over again. And I think that evens everything out and makes everything look um, what's the word I'm looking for? Not continuity, but it, it just looks like it's it's planned that it's supposed to be that color, that that is supposed to have that distress oxide ink that is uh, merging into the glue a little bit. So now we have both of those looking the same. We have a little exam paper table on both. And I want to let that dry. So we'll set that aside for, for a bit. And we'll work on our focal point. Ah, as it dries, I forgot I did this step. I'm laying down some light green paint and adding some water to it so I can splatter over the front and back cover with that uh, green. the circle of a woman's face that I have cut out of scrapbooking paper and have embossed, run through my embossing machine. I took the um, pan and wrapped my cover wire around it, and I'm using a 20-gauge copper wire. And I have just kind of laced that around the outside edge because it was about the same size as that hole punch. 
And now I have this copper frame of copper wire around my lady. I also have little tiny um, half inch, one inch circles that I've cut out of that same scrapbooking paper. And I'm going to do the exact same thing with them as well. Now to adhere the, or to create the continuity of the copper wire, because I'm going to be using it on my focal points, I also want to just lace some copper up one side of the front cover of this ephemera keeper. Now my copper wire, it, I have another video that shows how I made um, copper wire paper clips and, you know, kind of did this whole process. But that copper wire, I put in some liver of sulfur to darken it and age it. And this copper wire that I'm lacing through the top of this um, journal is exactly the same. And I'm just covering that with some masking tape to keep that in place and to keep it from, you know, slipping out. So now let's finish up these focal points. I'm going to grab my little resin kit. And I have this UV resin. I have this little UV light. And I will coat my copper piece in the resin. I'm going to lay a line of resin around that copper and make sure that that has the resin that is going to attach these two together and then I will also put that resin in the center and cover the lady's face with that resin as well. I'll set it under my UV resin light and allow that to cure. I'm going to do the same thing with those five little pieces that you see up in the um, right hand of my mat there. So this is how I'm going to place them. I have the five that I'm going to glue to the bottom. So they will be underneath the word ephemera. And the big copper piece, I'm going to pull all of those threads that I had um, saved from when we um, glued the or sewed the acetate and I'm going to put underneath my piece. Right now I'm using a white highlighter to kind of highlight on the word ephemera where I wrote that in black. I've put my threads down, glued that uh, lady's picture up there in her little copper frame. And the only thing that I have left to do is to glue that I taped, glued and taped that piece of sorry silk inside that front cover. Now I'm going to go around the outside edges with some additional inking. I'm using black. And we Close to the finish line of this. I need to glue everything together now. So I'm pulling out that yes paste and we will glue once we check to make sure that we have the pockets going in the right direction. We will glue the um, accordion ephemera keeper to the front cover. And there we go. We are glued together now. I'll just stick that 
sorry soaked down inside that first pocket and now I'm going to come to the back and glue the back down. I'll just stick the sorry silk out of the way, I guess is what I did. And there we go. Make sure we don't have any glue that's going to stick our file folders together. And now let's wrap that sorry silk. And I'm pulling out, I have a bunch of uh, beads that I've created out of uh, gel press printed paper and magazine paper. I'm going to attach one of those to the end of the sari silk. Wrap that up. Let's just place some ephemera down inside our ephemera holder and I'll stick a view in right now and I will continue to fill until we have a book full of all kinds of things that we can use in our journaling projects. And I shall give you a closer look at the cover and the ephemera keeper. And I hope you choose to participate and do something with file folders. If you do, please post your picture over on Instagram or in my Facebook group and use the hashtag tag a sister and we'll be able to kind of sort and see everything that everyone has created. So this is my challenge to Kylie Koo and to Texture Junkies, and I shall allow them to get creative with their file folders, and we'll see what they come up with, and I will tell you all bye for now. Here is another video that YouTube thinks you might enjoy.